To access the Dremel Print Cloud, first go to digilab.dremel.com, then go to the Software tab. When you scroll down, you'll see Wireless Printing with Dremel Print Cloud, and go to the Dremel Print Cloud. When I click this, it will bring me to the web application. If you are already signed in to digilab.dremel.com, you'll be redirected here and you won't need to sign in. However, if you aren't, you'll be prompted to either sign in or create an account. If it was your first time, you'll be prompted to register your printer. To register your printer, simply go to your 3D printer, click on the Tools button. Under About, there is a token. There will be a series of letters or numbers that you will put in as your token. And once you register your printer, it will show up as a registered printer to your account. Here you can see that I have two printers registered, a 3D40 that's on my desk and a 3D45 that's near my buddy Ben. And you can see that one is offline while one is idle and ready to go. So to import a file into the Dremel Print Cloud, simply click Upload New. I could drag a file from my folder structure, or I could hit Choose File and upload it that way. So now I can go to my file, and this accepts STL files as well as OBJ files, just like DigiLab 3D slicing software. Now here, I'm just going to follow the three easy steps. Step one, repair. First, I'm going to choose which printer I'm using. In this case, I'm going to use the 3D40. Click Fix. It's going to work its magic. And now I see that a file has popped up with an underscore repair.stl file. So now I'm going to move on to step two, layout. And this is very similar to the DigiLab 3D Slicer. I can scroll in and out to zoom. I can right click to mess with the orientation and I can hold shift and hit the left button to move in this way. Similarly, I can move, rotate and scale. So right now if I have move, I can move in all three dimensions like so. I can rotate. and I can scale. I should note that if you do scale, it does not automatically set this back on the bed. So you will have to click on bed and it will automatically drop it down for you. If you do want to add a file, you can do so as well. You can also duplicate your file So now that we're ready to slice, I can hit Save and Slice, and we'll automatically pull up step three. Here you can see the simple, straightforward instructions. Select your printer type, select your slicing profile. Here you can choose both your filament as well as if you want a draft slicing profile, standard, or best. And if I hit best, you can see that the settings all change automatically. The difference between the three is that standard is in the middle, draft has a larger layer height, which means that it's going to be faster, but that the edges are going to be a little bit rougher. And you can see that the infill or density of the model is much more hollow versus best, where you're getting to have a smaller layer height and a higher density. So you can even manipulate these on your own if you choose to do so. Next, you can choose whether this needs a raft. Rafting helps with build plate adhesion. This is a simple model, so I'm not going to use it. And then if you need supports as well, you can generate supports. In this case, I'm not going to because our 3D printers excel in this category, uh, but other objects that are more uh, intricate may need supports. 
There are also advanced slicing settings you can manipulate. But for this case, I'm going to keep it simple and click slice. And this is going to slice through the, cr the cloud. And now I'm ready to build. So when I click build, you'll see that I cannot print to the 3D45. It's offline. But there is this 3D40 that's idle and ready to go. And I can hit print. And now it's done. I will just continue in the background. And the neat thing is I can continue doing whatever it is that I'm doing. The printer is actually working right now. And if I hit the printer to check on what's going, it's saying it's downloading. And then you will see that the extruder will start heating up. And here we go. It's heating. And it's in progress. And I can see the details of this print. So that's very simple. And that covers the basics on how to slice with the Dremel Print Cloud.